Hi, this is George Fraser, CEO of FraserNet and Power Network Intelligence. And uh, boy, today was I impressed by Devin Robinson's heartfelt, uh, <laughs> his vision for people. He's profoundly realistic. He makes it plain, keeps it plain, and he tells us in a way that inspires us to take action. And that's really what I like now, his message uh, and the initiative uh, and the results that he has achieved in a relatively short period of time. Coach took bad clean up and they said I was too small and too skinny. So I never had the chance to, but George Frazier and the Frazier team gave me the chance to bat clean up, so I promise I'm going to swing the bat pretty hard this morning. Uh, thanks for having me here. Welcome to everyone to FraserNet. One of the things that I really love to see is um, when I go to entrepreneurship conferences and business conferences are females. Because a lot of people don't know that statistics show that of the businesses that succeed past five years, 73% of them had a female on the leadership team. Now, you gotta really think about that because genetically men seek opportunity, women seek security. So while we're bouncing around trying to get the ideas in the market, the women comes along and say, calm down, let me show you how to structure this thing and make it go for the long term, for the distance. So that's what really happens. Um, I'm the founder of Beauty Supply Institute, a training and consulting organization that I started three years after opening my first beauty supply in 2005. Now, I had no idea what I was up against. I got into the business, and somehow I was blessed and found enormous success. So within two years, I owned three stores. Let me show you something that came in the mail that kind of led me to uh, see that um, these are just the things we're faced with. And I, and I put this on my bulletin board for my employees to see. This is a, this is a solicitation to the beauty supply store that I got. And they automatically know who should own these businesses. So it's all written in Korean. And these are the solicitations that I get every week. Last Wednesday, we opened our 76 black owned store. <laughs> Next week, I'm heading to Ferguson, Missouri to open our 77th store. Right down the street from where they burned down the Korean-owned store, we're popping up a black-owned store, and we're gonna see the difference that it makes in that community. So that's what we're definitely gonna do. Since 2008, we've actually generated over $13 million in the black community throughout our, our, our beauty supply stores. And I really want you to really understand what that means because this is an uphill battle that we all endure. Now, we live in a society where they say, do as you're told. We grow up, they say, go to school, get good grades, go to college, take out student loans, get yourself a job. And what has that done for the black community? Nothing. Not a whole lot. I came from a household of do as you're told. For the most part, if my parents were here, they might say something different. <laughs> For the most part, I did what I was told. But back in 2005, I was shopping in a Korean-owned store for my barbershop and salon, and the guy didn't like my extensive browsing. I was about to spend about $2,000 that day because I realized that my stylists were running out to buy products from Korean stores. So I said, let me go get the products from the Korean store and have my own store. I didn't really think about owning my own store. But as I was browsing the, the aisles, the Korean guy grabbed a golf club and threatened me with the golf club and said, hurry up and buy it. <laughs> that was one of the days that I realized doing as you're told was for the birds. Thank you. You're such an inspiration. What was your gift to fire up? I'm a company Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay. If this guy is treating me, a business owner who's coming in to spend good money, how is he treating people of the community that may be less fortunate? So I raised a plan to go out and own my own store. I called the landlord from the parking lot. I said, I want this space next door. I gave him 
the five thousand dollars for to secure the space and I signed a five-year lease then I decided well where am I gonna get the products from <laughs> so I'm in this lease and I'm thinking about it but what do I do and I started realizing the obstacles that take place in owning beauty supply stores and hence I was able to uh, learn the business uh, and eventually within the next two years I had my very own store so I'll talk about that here in a second now let's talk about the facts about the industry facts about the industry is a 15 billion dollar industry 15 billion dollar industry 13,000 retailers across the country 85 percent of the revenue that's generated is generated from black people yet we only own about three percent of the stores Think about the hemorrhaging that's taking place. 3% averages to less than about 400 stores. Now I really want you to understand the power of ownership because America consists of 2.2 trillion acres. Less than 1% of those acres are owned by black people. We own 15 million acres and the majority of those acres are owned by black farmers. We're not really thinking about the ownership of businesses, land and things that really generate our wealth. <laughs> now, I did this in a beauty supply business and I gotta thank the guy for doing this to me because I started to see what problems existed. Up until that point, I did multiple businesses and I still do multiple businesses. This one's close to my heart because it's such a huge hemorrhaging for our community. Up until that point, I already had a $1 million net worth because of my real estate and my other businesses. But thanks to him, he was able to help me create, uh, establish my first million dollar revenue year because of these stores. So now I decided to teach other people how to do the same because a lot of times we believe what's going to lead to our success doesn't. We think it's product knowledge, prettier fixings, nicer stores. That's not what does it. We got to understand business. We got to understand supply management, inventory management, being reliable. We got to understand the etiquette of business and owning business it itself. How much money we should take. Managing a lot of money where only a fraction when it comes to our bank account personally and not raping the actual business. So these are the things that we gotta understand. Now some facts about blacks, let's think about this. One trillion dollar spending power. Just over 40 million blacks in this country. Now, I was talking yesterday and I was explaining to them that the revenues for Disney, they take about 200 million revenues that are black dollars, 200 million. Now Disney is an immobile business which means we go to them. But the minute we have conferences and we advertise to black people, what they start saying is, when is the conference coming to my city? When is the conference coming to my driveway? Because the things that lead to our success, we start to think is someone else's responsibility. We take our cues from government. We wait for the government to tell us what is best for us. And I can go a whole other direction with that, but I'm gonna go easy this morning because they tend to say I get a little radical sometimes. Beauty Supply Institute, when I founded the company in 2007, it's called Taking It Back University. <laughs> Taking It Back University. Now I was trying to go to expos and conferences to speak. They said, oh no, no, you're a little too rough. <laughs> taking it back. What are we taking it back? I mean, my logo was a picture of a black hand and an Asian hand with the money dropping out of it like this. <laughs> my logo because my mindset was we're taking this thing back but it was a little too rough so that's why I said I'm gonna back up a little bit and tone down because <laughs> sometimes I tend to get a little rough because I get excited over this stuff it's too many of us we got the revenue we like we got more revenue than a small nation we control a lot of the revenues yet we keep we gotta 
asked the man to take off from work to come to a conference. Let's think about this. Now, the number one offender in the criminal ju ju uh, justice system are black men. So you know what happens. The system's set up to say, well, you better not get a, a felony conviction because then you can't get a job, you can't vote, you can't get student loans, and what's not. But let's think about it. If we own our own businesses, we create our own rules. We can give people second and third chances from our community. But if we don't own anything, they're not getting second chances. Because we're depending on other people. You understand what I'm saying? We gotta stop taking the cues from the people that once enslaved us. Am I getting too rough? Calm me down in my hand. I don't, don't wanna get too. We gotta stop taking our cues from the people that now we believe has our best interests. I always say, it seems like the black entrepreneurs and us that are seem civilized and nicely tethered, we feel that our success should not be offensive. So we want to do business, but we hide and not say black and not say thick because we don't want to offend the wrong people. And the more that we think that we got to compliment and abide and assist, the more we're going to not take it back. The more we're going to see the hemorrhaging of the one trillion spending power going elsewhere. So if you see me do this, <laughs> down the halls, you know my sign, right? That's our new sign, black. Let's walk by. <laughs> Them. We gotta take this thing back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep on going. Let's go talk about this. Talk about this some more. Talk about this some more. They really believe what he is about. He's passionate about what he is about. And very clear what he wants. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
blacks how to compete with Korean or Arab owned stores. I teach them how to replace them. The second store that I opened put two Korean stores out of business. And that's my focus. We don't go in saying, is there a store already there? Is, is black people already there? We don't worry about the stores. We worry about black people there. We out black them. There's one thing they can't do is out black us. The good thing about being black is you don't have to look in the mirror and put on makeup every morning. You're not gonna forget. You're not gonna forget to put on your black. We don't have to remember the lingo. We know who, what, who's wearing what because of the churches we go to, the schools we go to, who lives in our neighborhood. They can't outblack us. What are we worrying about? Replace. That's the strategy. That's the strategy. We gotta be replacing them. Now, my session was yesterday. Unfortunately, my session was yesterday before this. So what I would need everyone to do now on your, on your phone is text power move. No space between power and move, all one word, to 22828. 22828. Power move. And you can connect with us there. I sh will be here for the remainder of the weekend. My team will be here uh, for the rest of the evening. So we'll be around. We can kind of talk and mingle and kind of explain to you how these things work. Just in business overall, we have another training academy called Urban Business Institute. Website, urbanbusinessinstitute.com. This uh, company that we have, uh, beautysupplyinstitute.com, that's the website. And just in my closing words, I just want to say, when people tell you to do, you got to think about their, the benefits to them. Because a lot of times when people are telling you to do something, it's for their own benefit. You have to make sure that their do aligns with your dream. And finally, what I want to say is, if you own your own business, you have no time to mind someone else's. Thank you. Something about banning it out to the cage. Let's give another round of applause, David Robinson. I need everybody to hashtag that. You can't out black us. Hashtag PNC15. Oh, Lord, I was about to throw my shoe, Jerry. Thank you.